Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today let's talk about the mighty grape behind Barolo and Barbaresco wines, Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo is my favorite red grape variety and in my opinion it is often misunderstood. It is not your everyday fun, fruit bomb type of wine and it might not offer immediate appeal for everyone. But when you taste Nebbiolo it makes sure that all the attention is on it and it has rarely disappointed me. Nebbiolo is also one of those grapes where its wines or rather appellations are better known than the grape itself. And they are Barolo and Barbaresco, probably its greatest expressions, long-lived, beautiful wines that lately have experienced a lot of attention, resulting in rapid price increase. So let's talk a little bit about one of the greatest Italian red grape varieties, Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo is one of those grape varieties that is not meant to make deeply black or ruby colored wines. It usually shows medium and sometimes even pale garnet color. In fact, what for some red wines is considered a sign of aging, such as brick orange tones, is not necessarily the case for Nebbiolo, as it can show this color already when young. Nebbiolo as a grape tends to show high acidity and high levels of tannins. It also develops elevated alcohol levels. These structural elements might not be easy to sell for everyday wine consumer. Many will describe greatest Barolos and Barbarescos as rich, powerful and full-bodied wines. And while these are highly structured wines with a lot of substance and weight, I always view them as elegant, ethereal and very aromatic. Yes, tannins are high and firm, and even though they are rarely polished, they sometimes taste sweet and even nutty. And then comes the aroma of Nebbiolo. It is so inviting, showing bright red fruits, often wrapped in the notes of violets, roses, and potpourri. Depending on the style, it can also show nice touch of sweet spices. With age, best Nebbiolo wines will develop its significant character of tar, and I have come to notice a lot of wines showing notes of truffles. As I mentioned before, in general, we associate Nebbiolo with rich and powerful wines. However, it is not necessarily always the case. Depending on where it is grown, it can also make lighter styles. However, if harvested not mature enough, it can taste austere. Because of Nebbiolo's high acidity, it can also be made into sparkling wines. And I know few producers who are successfully experimenting with sparkling Nebbiolos. Even though the best known wines of Nebbiolo such as Barolo and Barbaresco are monovarietal wines, Nebbiolo sometimes is blended with other grape varieties as well. The most notable example used to be done by Angelo Gaia with his wine San Lorenzo, which was Nebbiolo blended with small additions of Barbera and therefore labeled as Lange Nebbiolo. And wines from Gemme, Gattinara and Valtellina appellations can be blended with other local grapes such as Vespolina and Uva Rara. Lastly, Nebbiolo can be made into richer styles as well, for example, Sfursat in Lombardy, where it is made from dried Nebbiolo grapes, similarly as done with grapes destined for Amarone. Another interesting and unique style is Barolo Chinato, which is fortified Barolo wine enriched with spices, herbs and sugar great digestive. Because of wines, tannins and acidity, and of course elevated alcohol levels, the best examples will have capacity to age for decades in the bottle, which makes monovarietal Nebbiolos amongst some of the most age-worthy wines in the world. By far the most important country for Nebbiolo is Italy. After all, it is believed to be its birthplace. It is most planted in Piemonte wine region, where its best known appellations Barolo and Barbaresco are located. However, it is also planted in other sub-regions of Piemonte, such as Roero and Asti. In small pockets, Nebbiolo is also grown in regions Valle d'Aosta and Lombardy. Here the grape can be found under synonyms Picottener and Chiavenasca accordingly. In Lombardy, probably the best known appellation for Nebbiolo is Valtellina. 
fun fact is that, that these three regions, Piemonte, Valle di Aosta and Lombardy, are amongst only five Italian regions that do not have access to sea. Nebbiolo is very much an Italian grape and its plantings outside Italy are very marginal. Some producers are experimenting with it in southern France, but it is mostly blended with other grapes. In the New World, probably the best known examples are coming from California. And I remember in one of my trips, I was so excited to taste Californian Nebbiolo. However, it was nothing close to its style in Italy. That is not to say that these wines were bad or the quality was not there. It was just not the Nebbiolo that I knew. And that speaks how much this grape can really mirror its terroir in the glass. Otherwise, it is also planted in Argentina, Australia, Chile and South Africa. Nebbiolo can definitely be great with wide variety of meats. Be it juicy, medium rare, grilled steak on open fire, or meaty stews with intense flavors braced for many hours. Nebbiolo has it all. Structure, body, acidity and tannin to be a great partner for these foods. But what is more interesting, it is one of the rare wines that can stand proudly next to expressive characters of truffle. Truffles have this intense aroma that can easily overpower most of the wines, yet Nebbiolo marries well with it. Therefore, I believe this is one of the greatest wines one can have with range of wintry mushroom dishes, especially if they are served with fresh truffles. Think of flavorsome mushroom risotto or porcini pasta. The top producers, of course, will be found in Barolo and Barbaresco, and most names will be well known, such as Gaia, Giacomo Contarno, Bruno Giacosa, Rinaldi, and Bartolo Mascarello. Amongst the producers that I choose are Enrico Rivetto, Bruno Rocca, Da Milano, and of course, Yeti. Antoniolo makes beautiful wines from Gemme, and Arpepe are great examples from Valtellina which are often great bargain if compared to wines from Barolo and Barbaresco. However, there are many, many more great producers of Nebbiolo to discover. In fact, I have made a video about five amazing Barolo producers whose wines are still quite affordable. Check it out.